All right, first edition of Chilling with the Coach, and we got Mike Neighbors. I mean, you talk about having a great subject right away to, to, to launch this Chill, series. Man. Yes, exactly. And, uh, you know, your personality, man, I mean, it, it's one of the best I've been around. Oh, uh, what's it like, you know, just basically being a basketball coach, but, you know, going through some of the things you do away from the court? I mean, you, you got a number of things, man. You're a movie buff. I know you love Christmas Vacation. You do. Uh, great at guitar. I mean, the list goes on and on, man. Well, I think it's, you know, coaching's a lifestyle. And I like the lifestyle coaching affords you. Um, you don't have to be basketball 24-7. And if you are, I don't think you enjoy this thing. I mean, people looked at me today like, what are you so dressed up for? Because I right. normally got on slides. Yeah. Like, why are you wearing slides for? I said, well, you know, I'm going to be shot on TV a little yeah. bit. So I, I like being able to wear tennis shoes and, and short shorts and sweats. Uh, the lifestyle, give you, I'll travel the country, uh, the rhythm of a, of a season. Um, you do have some downtime, and most people think we don't, but you, you have to find times to do that, to binge watch your shows. Mm -hmm. I, otherwise, I can't <laughs> binge watch my, my Netflix and yeah. my Prime. Yeah, I know you were there with our very own Alyssa Orange there at your house, yeah. and, and you went through the list of the movies, man. Sure. And so let's get away from the court for a minute because those things are perfectly categorized. Well, I am a little bit when it comes to that. I, I do like to have it uh, arranged. I wouldn't tell you that I'm OCD or anything like that. <laughs> they can move them around if they want, but uh, I do like them arranged to be able to tell the story. I don't think you can tell the story of, of why you have things that you have or the, the things you choose to collect yeah. and, and be making memories of unless you can, can show them off a little bit. So, uh, yeah, they are in order of the way I like them. They, so if you come in and alphabetize them, I'm, I'm, I'm in trouble. It seems like you've got a, a personality that is just like, you know, I'm not going to get too high or too low. Same point in time, you know, just kind of look at your team this past season and the way that I was able to rub off on your team. And sure. it, it just seemed like, you know, to me it was like, all right, was there a point in your career where maybe like a switch went off and you were kind of like, man, this is not me. I've never been too yeah. serious. What's that been like? It wasn't you? a switch. It was a heart attack. <laughs> thing hitting you right, right, in the gut. The, right, yeah. right here in the middle of the chest <laughs> and actually my jaw is where it started but you know they, they always say when you had, have physically had your heart touched it changes you and I've had it done twice so I, I think once I realized yeah. uh, there's a lot more to this and the birth of my daughter mm -hmm. who just graduated from the university with her second degree those things change your life a heart attack and a daughter becoming this age and knowing I just want somebody to treat my daughter I try to treat everybody's daughter that way when I'm coaching them it's I'm not going to treat them differently whether the shot goes in or misses. And I would want somebody to treat my daughter that mm -hmm. way. And then the, the reality of life is short with a heart attack that I'm not going to get too up or too down uh, based on whether we had the most points on the board at the mm -hmm. end of the game. It's so much more than that. Um, and if you're coaching for those reasons, then you have to win every game. Mm -hmm. And you have to win a championship every year. And I just don't think that's conceivable uh, in today's society. Uh, and I'm certainly, even if we did, I, if it changes me, I want one of you guys to be the first ones to kick me in the butt and tell me, hey, you've changed. I don't want to ever change. Off-season wise, talk about recruiting and the direction of this program, because after your second year, you got this program going in the right direction. Great run in the SEC tournament all the way to the SEC final. I do want to ask you a quick basketball question, but it's more so just about the emotions of your team, because okay. I did hear you on SEC Network, and right away, uh, right before you went to the SEC final, it was like, all right, you know, I'm having more fun right now than when I went to the Final Four with Washington. It was, and, and I think it was because of where the expectations started and where they were. This team was, um, they surrendered to us as coaches uh, at the beginning of the year, and then we surrendered it back to them at the end of the year. And to see that maturity uh, in, our, in our kids that were returners, welcoming our newcomers, that's when as a coach you, you feel like you've done your best work. Uh, and sometimes how deep you go in or what tournament you play in, it doesn't always reflect that. Uh, I've always said these people that win Coach of the Year awards, I bet if you went back and asked them, they would say to you, it wasn't even one of my most fun years. It wasn't the best coaching job we ever did. I think for this group to have achieved what they did, the way they did it, uh, they could all walk out knowing that there wasn't much left in the tank. Uh, we certainly ran out of gas. There was no question we ran out of gas against TCU. But we got there. And we ran out of gas because we went to Italy in the preseason and we played 37 games. There's a reason you ran out of gas. And, and you can live with your head high, walk out of there, and, and know that it was all done the right way. Here's the part everybody knows. You're holding the basketball now, but you're holding the guitar. Tell yeah. me about the Razorback Road Show. What yeah. were the numbers that you played? What was that all about? Well, Elvis Moya, who you know, kind of put these things together with uh, the coaches and, and taking Hunter on the road to spread our one vision. 
Um, Mountain Home was our first stop. We had our cheer squad there, some dance team. We had some athletes from tennis and track and field. Um, so it was just a community coming out. And, and I've always grown up with Mountain Home being a place where um, I understand the people are Arkansas through and through. And Elvis mentioned, bring your guitar. We might, we might play some <laughs> songs. So, you know, we didn't know whether we were going to do it or not, but the way the vibe kind of went going through the night, and uh, we got up there and we had some uh, people join in with us. It was that type of atmosphere, so we closed it off with a little, uh, a little acoustical set on the guitar, and the cheerleaders jumped in, and it was a great way to wrap up the night. All right, I saw you at Iowa State. Alyssa Orange was on that trip, and you got a pretty nice stroke, so uh, please go easy on me here. Okay. We'll see what happens okay. here. Game of horse okay. with Mike Neighbors. Let's see. <laughs> 